Greetings, folks. Hey, this is Piano Man Steve Lundgren, founder of the Piano Man Approach online piano course. If you want to know more about me, please check out pianomansteve.com, where you can also opt in if you like for my free weekly teaching and performing videos and all kinds of other fun little goodies over there. Uh, and today we are going to, in our free lesson, be looking at a song demonstration using my method, uh, my song learning formula, as well as just my method of playing in general. And we're going to be taking a look at uh, Folsom Prison Blues by Johnny Cash, kind of a staple in country music. And uh, before we get started really quick, let me just... Uh, shamelessly ask if you enjoy this kind of free content i'd sure appreciate it if you would uh, give it a like and subscribe to my channel and share it with people you think might like it and leave a comment down there let me know what you want me to cover in the future songs you might want me to do a demo for um maybe signature lines you're looking for tutorials for um or also just you know, techniques and just basic ideas on piano that you struggle with that you'd like a little more clarity. I always, uh, I can't promise I'll do every one of them, but I try to be as responsive as I can to those. So now that we have that out of the way, let us move on. So, uh, as always, we, uh, we're going to be using, uh, what I call the glide five-step formula. Okay. So first of all, if you're unfamiliar with the piano man approach, we do not read music. We don't read notes on the page. We use chords, rhythm patterns, and simple improv techniques. And we're going to go through some of those through the course of use and kind of use this song as the vehicle to show you some of that stuff. But we have this special five-step formula that we use um, to, to learn just about any song and learn it pretty quickly, uh, at least a kind of a fundamental credible version of it and then you have all kinds of different ways you can enhance it from there and I call it the glide formula it's an acronym and we'll get into what that means but the reason I call it the glide formula is because it allows you to glide through learning any song so let me bring the formula up on the screen for you here and as you can see the first letter of each step uh is a different step of the of the formula and step one is g get the chords now in some cases you can find the chords to a song for free just by searching it and it'll be there with the song lyrics um but in other cases you may have to you know purchase some sheet music or something from a place like hal leonard fake books that kind of thing but we're going to ignore any of those written notes for the most part. All we're going to be looking at is the guitar chords that are above the staff. Okay? Step two is L, listen to the song, which you can almost always do for free on just any of a bunch of different platforms right here on YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple, or, you know, Apple Music, many more. So you pick your poison wherever you listen to music and you take a listen to the tune either now or after you've seen the full demo here you can do that step three is you identify the feel and this step is about finding the core rhythm pattern that's going to turn these chords into an approximation of the recording and there's four essential feels that i teach over at the piano man approach for rhythm patterns and uh they kind of encompass at least 90 to 95 percent of popular music from all of the 20th century and forward and uh, there's certainly a lot of variations and a lot of customization you can do beyond that but these four are a really really good place to start any journey that you go on with a song and so that's the third step or excuse me that is uh, step three step four is drill it down d and what we mean by that is that we take a very simple version of the song and we just get it under our hands, get used to moving between the different chord sequences, you know, the, the progression of the chords in this song. And that's basically all it is, is just get really comfortable with it in a simple way so that you can start putting enhancements in it and you're not... The, the main thing is you don't want to overwhelm your brain. You don't want to be thinking, how do I make this more interesting while at the same time wondering now, what chord am I going to, right? You want, you want to be focused on, on the hardest thing you're doing, not five other things that you're doing. So we want to drill it down, get it on autopilot, 
And then finally, the fifth step is E, enhance with simple improv and signatures, which means you can use easy improvisation techniques based on the chords that you're already playing. And then you can add in more specific and precise signature lines that are identified with the tune if you know them. And that's where you might be able to use some written notes, but there's a lot of other sources for signature lines as well. So we'll talk about that as we get closer. So let me bring it back to the main screen here. So now that you know the process, let's just pretend that you've already made it through steps one and two, that you found the chords and you listen to the tune. And by the way, I have the lyrics and the chords in the video description of this YouTube video. You just have to scroll down uh, below my links and other stuff like that. And you'll see the lyrics to the song and the chords of the song in correlation to them. So you don't have to go anywhere anywhere else fancy. They're just right here in this video. So let's say that you found the chords, you've listened to the tune, and you're ready to pick out your essential rhythm pattern. So... I have, as I said, four essential feels that we kind of use as our starting point. Uh, the first one I call the basic feel, and it's kind of like quarter notes in the left hand, and this is based on four beats per major, so like one, two, three, four. And then we just kind of put one, two, three, four. On two and four, we play the chord. So we're in the key of F major. So we're going to play an F chord, F, A, C, like so. And underneath, we're playing octave Fs or even just a, an F on one note, maybe with just your thumb or just your pinky. Four, one, two, three, four. That's what I call the basic feel. And then we have one that's called the syncopated feel or the heartbeat feel that goes one, two, and three. So see how it goes, thump, 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 thump. That's why we call it the heartbeat feel. It has a little syncopation in there, and we just kind of play quarter notes in the top hand on a chord. Then we have one called the country feel. Not all country music uses the country feel, but it's common. That is where we play a, um, on the left hand, we're going to alternate between the one and the five of the chord. So if you think about that, if you think of a numeric placement of the scale degrees, one, two, three, four, five, right, on an F scale, that means you're going to alternate between F and C, one and two and three and four and one and two. And on the off beats, you're going to play the chord in your right hand. One and two and three and four. And okay. And then the fourth is a waltz pattern, and it only applies to songs that are in three, four, or six, eight. And we can rule that out because this song definitely is uh, four beats per measure or at most two beats per measure. I hear them. Three, four, one, two, three, four. I ain't seen the sunshine since. Okay? So we know it's four beats per measure. The reason I showed you all of these feels is that the formula is once you know these four feels, you can try them out with the chords and see which one sounds most like the song, right? So we try a couple things out, and if you try the basic feel, you get I hear the train a coming. Rolling around the bend I ain't seen the sunshine since It's not terrible It doesn't quite capture the essence of what Johnny was doing But it would that would work, right? Because it's that constant kind of quarter notes in the, in the left hand And we try the syncopated feel I hear the train a-coming Rolling around the bend I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. You know, not not really if you're trying to sound like Johnny's uh, famous live recording that, that everyone knows from Folsom Prison. That definitely doesn't feel quite right, although it would be an interesting way to go about the song if you wanted to create your own arrangement. 
which is another reason why it's kind of cool to know different rhythm patterns because you can do your own thing. But let's try the country feel and see how it comes out. I hear the train a coming, rolling round the bend. Yeah, I ain't seen the sun shine since I don't know when. Well, we've hit our Goldilocks there, right? You can just feel like the song slips right into place. This is a traditional country song. Works great with the country feel. Some songs are less obvious. Some songs have more than one rhythm pattern that could work, and it becomes sort of a judgment call for you as to which one you happen to like the sound of better. But most songs will tend to, to sort of like fit much more comfortably into one of these patterns over the others, and that's the one that you land on. So now that we have identified the feel, right? Now that we have identified the feel and everything else, let's drill it down. So what that means is that we want to take the chords, which is F. It goes on for a while. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. And then it goes to a B flat, either a B flat major, or if you want to get fancy, a B flat seven chord. I'm stuck in Folsom prison. Time keeps dragging back to F on. Now when I, and then it goes to a C or a C seven chord. Hear that whistle blowing in my head and cry. Okay. So the idea behind that is just to get your hands used to the chords. We're not going to try to play any signatures. We're not going to try to put any improv in it. We're just going to use this basic rhythm pattern feel and just get those chords under your hands. So the way it starts is bam bam boom on a C chord, bam 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 bam. Then to an F chord, bam. And then the lyrics start. I hear the train coming, rolling round the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. B flat. Stuck in Folsom prison And time keeps dragging Back to F on But that C train keeps moving On down to San and F tone When I was just a baby Okay, and you do that a few times until you can play it kind of at tempo, at, at full speed, and you want that chord sequence under your hands. You don't have to do anything fancy, but now the rhythm pattern and the chords are there, and you can be up at speed, and even without enhancing the song at all, right? This is a pretty good sounding facsimile. I hear the train coming, rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom prison Time keeps dragging on I hear that whistle blowing On down to San Antonio And that's what I love about this method Is here we are Where all we're doing is a very, very basic rhythm pattern A very basic version of the chords but already, it sounds pretty darn good. <laughs> I mean, we haven't put any signature lines, any improv. It already sounded pretty darn good. That rhythm pattern and those chords alone carry the song awfully well. And this is why I love this method for uh, people who are, you know, more novice players who don't have a lot of experience and a lot of momentum because this allows you to learn a song relatively quickly and even at your more... Um, uh, entry level skill set where you you haven't really built up a lot of muscle memory a lot of dexterity in your fingers you can play something that sounds pretty cool right for the more advanced players there's a gazillion things we can do to make this more interesting now that that we're there right but for the for the people that that are not at that level yet wow 
this is so much more fun. It's so much more fun sounding than than what would be written on an entry level sheet music uh, staff, right? So that's what I enjoy about this method is that it really allows everybody at, at every point of entry to <clears throat> to kind of have a a satisfying musical experience right away. So, and I just want to point this out. The biggest problem that most people encounter with any type of a piano method is that really anything they're trying to learn about, you know, or and this is like true with anything you're trying to learn about anything, is this desire to jump into advanced practice before you have the fundamentals solid. And that's why this, this drill it down step is kind of important regardless of what level you're at. Because, you know, it's tempting. I know how easy it is to feel like something really rudimentary like this can be like, boy, that feels like it's a long way from what I want it to be, you know. Uh, but people have a, a big tendency to overestimate how long it's going to take and what it will take to enhance something simple. And they really underestimate how much faster those enhancements come together if they've got that foundation already pretty solid underneath. So... So trust the process. If you get the foundation solid, then suddenly the little tweaks that we start making will make it really interesting really fast. Okay, so let's pretend that you've got enough reps under you now in the drill it down stage that we can move on to enhancing with uh, signatures and simple improv. Okay, so first let's look at some pretty simple enhancements. Uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can enhance something with imp with chord based improv. One is rhythmic and one is harmonic. And and rhythmic is where you're going to create something exciting or interesting with the timing and articulation of the chords that you're playing. Whereas harmonic is actually enhancing the chords that you play by adjusting the voicing or by maybe adding some grace notes that the chords don't necessarily have to have it makes them a little more complex but maybe a little more interesting to the ear and there's absolutely no rule that you can't do uh, harmonic and rhythmic enhancements at the same time so here's a couple of my favorite rhythmic maneuvers that uh, we can look at uh, they're called toggles and arpeggios and so let's just take a look at a chord here what a toggle means that's where you play the chord and you play the top part of the chord top part of your hand and then toggle down to the thumb right or toggle from the thumb up to the top part of the hand and there's a lot of different kinds of rhythms you can do so if in this case for example you're playing like this right you can do a toggle that goes like this See what a simple enhancement that was and what a big difference it makes at speed, at full tempo, how different it sounds to just play this, which is the, the simple version of the rhythm pattern. And this one simple toggle, just every other, every other beat. It's like we brought a galloping horse into it, right? I love that. This is what I mean where you say the enhancements start to add up very quickly. I hear the train coming, rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when, but I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. Time keeps dragging on. Well, I hear that a whistle blowing on down to Santa. So that's just a very simple thing. An arpeggio is simply when you take the notes of the chord and you play them individually and usually in some kind of a sequence up or down, but it wouldn't have to be. You could play them in whatever sequence you want, but rather than playing them in a block, you play them like that. So maybe every once in a while... play that slower so you can see what I'm doing. It 
it's just a little simple fill, right? These are not, this is not brain surgery. These aren't like crazy, you know, like up and down the keyboard. It's just like a very simple, tasteful little fill that all it does is it makes it a little more interesting to listen to. Sometimes it goes unnoticed in terms of specifically what it is, but people can just hear that it's a little more complex, a little more interesting. I hear the train coming, rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. Time keeps dragging on. Now I hear that whistle blowing on down to San Antonio. I keep messing that last lyric up. It's that train keeps a moving on down to San Antonio. But I'm probably going to make that mistake again. So. Everybody get over it, write comments, say, you don't know the words, dude. You're right. Anyway, so that's just something that can be done. And you can, you can do both. You can use both of these techniques. It's like they pile on top of each other. So you can be going, I hear the train coming, rolling around the bend. So we're using the toggle, right? I hear the train coming, rolling around the bend was my arpeggio. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. Time keeps dragging on. I hear the rain a There's no right or wrong way to do this, and you get to make choices as you're playing. Do I want to throw a little fill in? Do I want to throw a little toggle in or a little arpeggio? And the nice thing about it is these are chord-based techniques. You don't have to think very hard. It's like your hand is already on the chord. You're just going to execute that chord a little bit differently. So those are just a couple of really simple rhythmic maneuvers. Now, one of my favorite simple harmonic maneuvers is to simply add, you know, some notes to the chord that make it a little more complex version of the chord. So, and, and the other thing that you can do is you can play different chord inversions. So let's talk about inversions. So I'm showing you, this is what we call a root inversion F, right? F, A, C, right? But those three notes, if you play them in any grouping, make up an F chord. And in the left hand, we're already kind of playing that root note, right? So your, your low end is covered. So you could play them here, A, C, F, like that. It's called first inversion. Same, it's an F chord, but it sounds a little different than it does here, right? And you could do the same thing here, C, still an F chord, but it has a different sound because it's being voiced differently. It's a chord voicing, right? That's a very, very simple way to enhance a, the sound of a song. So instead of being kind of trapped with... Always sticking to root inversion, suddenly it can be, I hear the train coming... Rolling around the bend I ain't seen the sunshine Since I don't know when I've been stuck in Folsom Prison Time keeps dragging on Now, you may not be ready to be jumping around to inversions like that, but when you're really, really familiar with these chord inversions, that's an interesting way to mix up the sound, is you're not really even doing anything rhythmically. You're just kind of moving around from different chord inversions. Another thing that's nice is that you can work your way up and down the piano with the inversions of the chord because they allow you to move to the nearest version of the chord from where you already are. So I could be like, I hear the train coming, we're on F, rolling around the bend. 
I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. Now, instead of going here and kind of jumping up, look, we got a lovely, uh, that would be second inversion B flat chord, F, B flat, D, instead of jumping all the way there. I don't know when I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. Time keeps dragging on. Now, I could go back to root inversion F, right? But I could decide that I'm just going to kind of work my way up the piano, and in the second verse, I'm going to work my way down the piano using inversions. Picking an inversion that works me slight up each time there's a chord change, then picking one that makes it go down. So watch how I'm going to go through two verses and watch how I kind of work my way a little bit up the piano and then down. I'm not going to add any rhythmic stuff to it. This is just going to be only changing the inversion of the chord. I hear the train coming, rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when, but I'm stuck in Folsom prison. Time keeps dragging on. I hear the train moving on down to San Antonio. Notice we started here, but now we're all the way up here, right? Now, second verse. I was just a baby. My mama told me, son, always be a good boy. Don't ever play with guns. But then I shot a man in Reno, working my way down slowly. And then watch him die. Now that I hear that whistle blowing, I hang my head and cry. Now I'm back here, so I went. And then to here, and then here, and then here. So I was just kind of working my way up and then down a little bit, and it just gives it a little bit of harmonic variety. Again, absolutely nothing wrong with not doing any of this stuff. The song is there without any of it. It's just simple ways to make it more interesting to play. And, and so what this method is about is assembling a toolbox of maneuvers that you can call on and some of them are more advanced and some of them are very very simple but the idea is is that in the moment that you're playing you can choose a tool and apply it boom in the moment and then you can do something else and then you can do something else and then you can do nothing except the basic chords and then you can do something else and it keeps the song a little bit fresh for you but it keeps the essence of the song alive so well that, you know, you don't distract people. Like if someone else was listening, they wouldn't necessarily know that you were playing it different each time. But for you, you don't get locked into, oh, this is how it has to be. This is the only way that it can be. And that's just how it is, which is what sheet music does, which is what note for note song tutorials do. I have a few of those that I've taught for you know, a very limited number of artists, but I don't really like doing them because it's not how I play piano. <laughs> you know, like I have a bunch of Billy Joel tutorials, but it's not even how I play Billy Joel music. <laughs> so I, um, I, I understand the allure, especially if you idolize a particular piano player to try and like learn their part exactly. And I've tried to lean into that a little bit for the fan communities for a couple of my favorite artists. But uh, in general, I don't think that's a, as fun of a way to approach music as just having this wonderful uh, vast array of simple tools that you can use and combine with other simple tools and and create kind of a fresh experience for yourself every time. It keeps the song as exciting for me every single time that I play them. So that's one of the things that you can do. Another thing you can do is you can make the chord a little more complex. Uh, you can add dominant sevens. Uh, you can add, you know, twos or added nines. And in this case, the most likely one would be to add a dominant seven on the B flat chord and the C chords. Let me show you what that means. So when we get to a B flat, 
if you look at the scale of a B flat chord, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, right? A dominant seven is you take the major seven and you flat it, okay? So it's the minor seven. The reason we call it the dominant seven is that you're playing a minor seven. You're playing a minor seven in a major chord, right? So you have B flat, D, F, B flat major chord with that minor seventh in there. Boom. That's your dominant seven chord. When they call it a minor seven chord, what they mean is you're playing that minor seventh in there and you're playing a minor triad. So B flat, you flat the third. Right? And then when they call it a major seven, you're playing the major chord and you're playing that major seven. So that's a little bit of chord inside baseball. But this song, what, it, what a dominant seven tends to do is it adds a little spunk, a little attitude to the sound of a chord. So listen to a B flat, just major chord. Yeah, kind of happy, right? Simple and happy. Kind of a dog, you know? It's kind of like a little dog chord. I'm happy. Right, you know? And then you put that, that in there with it. And it becomes a cat. It's like, I'm happy, but I'm a little sly. Like, I march to the beat of my drum. I don't follow all your darn rules. You know, that kind of thing, right? And this song has a little spunk in it. You know, it's about someone sitting in a prison, not someone who was a rule follower, right? So throwing in a dominant seven on the B flat and throwing in a dominant seven on the C, C e, G, makes a lot of sense. Throw a little attitude into the song. But then I kind of like keeping the F, which is the main key signature chord, just kind of major, you know? I don't want to get over the top. He's not always spunky. He got caught. Cats usually don't get caught. They do whatever they want, and they get away with it. So so it sounds kind of good. We can throw in that, and, and adding a dominant seven is just like anything else. There's inversions. You can play it here in root position. Or right, and the other thing to keep in mind is that since you're kind of covering the ba in the bass note in your left hand, you're playing the root of the chord. You don't have to if you want to just play three notes. You could leave B flat out of it and just play those notes. But you can also play B flat with it in your right hand. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. I'm just giving you options. But I hear the train coming. This is without the dominant seven. Rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. Sounds fine, right? But now let's hear it with the dominant seven on that chord. I hear the train coming. Rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when I'm stuck in Folsom Prison Time keeps dragging on That's how That just kind of added a little depth, right? Isn't that nice? So that's a, that's a fielder's choice. You can, you can choose to do that where it sounds right to you. And then when you throw in maybe some of those rhythmic things we were talking about and you're just adding in that harmonic change of being able to play with different inversions of the chord and we're going to add that dominant seven in and suddenly you got yourself a much more sophisticated arrangement with pretty simple maneuvers. So you get, I hear the train coming, rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sun shine since I don't know when I'm stuck in holes in prison. All 
we're doing there is some toggling, some arpeggiating, using different inversions of the chord, and we're adding in a dominant seven on a couple of, of uh, notes. So as you can see, very, very simple improv techniques can add up to very, very big and substantive changes in the sound uh, very quickly. Okay, but none of that's possible unless you get it really drilled down in the simple way, because you can't be thinking about what chord am I going to again and, and how do I form a B flat chord and then be putting these enhancements on. You know, your brain's just going to blow up if you do that. You need to be able to focus on the the highest level of the equation because the foundation underneath it is so solid that it's almost like on autopilot. Now. One other thing that I want to talk about is uh, signature lines. And in this song, we have an opportunity to, to discuss a signature line. And it's one of my favorite things uh, to talk about. And that's when you have a signature that's not a piano signature, right? Like this song isn't really known for piano. It was done on guitars, and steel guitars, and that kind of thing. It, it wasn't really a piano song. Nothing in it, ha there's not anything noticeable in it that was done on piano. So what you do have, though, is a guitar line that went down, 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 right? <clears throat> so how do we do that on piano? Well, one thing that I'm a big encourager and an advocate for is don't try to make the piano something that it's not. Like, accept the piano for the instrument that it is and then do what only the piano can do, right? And so when you have a really interesting line like that, we're not going to be able to do bends. We're not going to be able to make the piano go bow, 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 bow. It's going to be bum, 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 right? So let's, let's just pick that out. That's about as close as you can get. C, 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 E, E, C, A flat, F. And what I would say is bridge it, A flat, G, F. Right? Now, sounds a little, eh, you know, sounds a little kind of boring that way. Might need to learn it that way just to get the, the get it under your hand, but... What you can do in piano is you can really accentuate an, a, a, a line like that by playing octaves. It really, really will make it punch and kind of <clears throat> accentuate the, that melody. Now, you don't have to do this, but this is just a technique uh, sort of a technique tip that I learned from one of my favorite piano teachers I ever had. Uh, when you're playing black keys, if you can get yourself into the habit of using, um, and you play an octave to use, your thumb is fine, but use your ring finger rather than your pinky. I don't always remember to do it, but most of the time I do, and it's made my execution a little cleaner. So... White keys, thumb and pinky are fine. Same on your left hand. Thumb, ring finger. So just a little thrown in tip there. Um, so when you play that over the top of that left hand bass, I hear the terrain coming, rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine. I don't know when I'm stuck in bulls in prison. Time keeps dragging on. Now I hear the train of moving on down to San Antonio. And then it gets to a part where there's a guitar solo, and the guitar solo goes. <laughs> Right? And if you pick it out on piano, it's like A flat, A, C, E flat, C, E flat, C. Right? That very same concept can be used. Let's just play it octaves. And you can do it here. 
or you can do it up an octave. Right? Or something like that. It doesn't have to be precise. All we're trying to do is like, we're trying to create the essence of what was there. We're not trying to copy it exactly because that was a band of like three guitars, an upright bass, a, and a pedal steel, and a drummer. Well, we're not going to be able to do exactly what they did. They had different instruments and a different number of people. And this is one, we're just one person sitting at a piano. But can we create the essence, right? So we get out of here. So I hear that train move. I hang my head and cry. At full speed, it looks like this. play that kind of slow so you can see kind of what I did and it won't be exactly what I just did but it'll be close enough and just give you an idea of how I'm using octaves to kind of pick out that signature song that signature line give it a little punch which helps anyone who might be listening really really connect with the song and then we just jump right back into our rhythm pattern work with our right hand and the left hand just kind of keeps that unglamorous but very important <laughs> step going in the bass because what is it doing it's be it's basically acting as both the bass guitar and the drummer in your band so Pretend like I'm on the second verse is when I was just a baby my mama told me son always be a good boy don't ever play with guns but I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die now when I hear that whistle blowing I hang my head Ready for that solo to go. Yeah. And now I'm just going to do, you know, rhythmic stuff on the chords. So it just kind of works out nicely. And one last thing I'm going to give you as a tip for this, for this song, but hopefully something you can take with you on other songs, is when you have something like that, boom, 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 sometimes it's nice to slide off, like flat it and slide off of it on your attack. So it's just like a little blip, but... See how that gives it a little bluesier, you know, a little more edgy uh, attack. Okay, 
So anyway, at this point, I think I've given you enough to work with here. We've talked all the way through enhancements and, and, uh, I know this video has gotten long, but I get excited when I'm talking about this because, you know, once you take these techniques and you apply them in one video or, you know, in one song, they're there for you to use in like a myriad of other songs. So this is all very transferable stuff. And, um, I just, I love how it becomes like a snowball going down a hill and each of these techniques, once they become yours, they're yours forever and you can use them all over the place. And it's just so, it just gets so stinking much fun to play the piano when you have a method that allows you to learn songs quickly and, you know, to get, to get the essence of the song really, really fast and have it already sound as good as it does just like this. And then suddenly to be able to make these tiny, like microscopic, simple tweaks and have them make such a difference. And, and then you get two or three of them going at the same time. And oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. See, this is, this is what my life is all about. I just absolutely love to play music. And it's because this method has made all of music so accessible to me. And and it's always so fresh, you know, it's so similar. Like every time I play the song, it's so it's close enough to every other time that I play it, that anyone listening in, they're not necessarily going to notice that I did it way different. But for me, <clears throat> I can feel the freshness every single time of, of the run through, because it just, it's always different. I can make different choices every time. And every time I learn a new technique, then I become like a kid in a candy store and I use it in every song, <laughs> you know, so uh, at least for a while till I get sick of that one and learn a new one. But anyway, hopefully that's what you'll be able to take with this is I hope it helps you with this song. But even more importantly, I hope that everything that we've learned here today is something that you can take forward with other songs and expand your enjoyment of making music. Okay, so I'm going to get out of here for now. I really appreciate you tuning in. I hope that you'll watch the next one. If you go to pianomanapproach.com, uh, you can not only get some free goodies, but you can opt in to get my uh, weekly uh, my, my weekly email blast where I have a I always put out a blog post with all of my new um, I put out performance and teaching uh, free performance and teaching content every week. And I always have links to all of that. So if you're interested in, in, uh, getting those notifications so that you never miss one and, uh, that you, you don't have to search through this ocean of content on uh, YouTube to find it, then I hope that you'll head over there and, and opt into the mailing list. We'd love to have you. You can learn more about me and my courses over there as well. So, But for now, I mostly just want to say thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you're walking away with usable information. That's what matters most to me. I want you to have practical, usable stuff. So... As always, I want to remind you of my personal mantra. If you're not having fun when you're making music, you're doing it wrong. I will see you on the next free lesson, and uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Piano Man Steve, signing out. <laughs>